Welcome back. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Uh, this is Dave Hampton on the Bit About Crypto podcast. I'm here joined by uh, Joa Santos, uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Aldrin. Uh, Joa, I believe, if I recall from last time, you, you're joining us from, from the uh, beautiful country of Portugal. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Not too beautiful yeah. today. It's rainy, but typically... Typically yeah. beautiful. Is it is it like the rainy season there? Or? No, not really. Just it's odd because it typically only rain. It'll rain for like one month straight, and then doesn't rain the rest of the year. Oh. Um, so it's not normal to be raining now. Gotcha. So it's an aberration, is what you're saying. Yeah. All right. Well, sounds good, man. So uh, glad to have you. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the investment of being on the show. With love to you know hear about what you guys are going you know doing. Love to hear. You know, for the audience, I, I always like to hear, you know, your journey, the our guest journey in terms of how you, you started and then and, and how you, you know, I'll ask the pre question prematurely, but how, how crypto found you and then how that led to you, you know, to where you are today. So uh, please, with you know, without uh, further ado, you know, enlighten us. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for the invite. Um, crypto, it's funny. I, I heard about Bitcoin back in 2012. Um, didn't put a whole lot of investment into it, but I, I did buy some. Like I spent 400 bucks and I bought some Bitcoin. So I was like, you know what? If this takes off, it's going to be it's going to be huge. Um, in 2000, the last bull run, 2017, I got more interested in it. Uh, did a lot of foolish things like buying crypto kitties and things like that. But, you know, everything was very experimental, let's say. Um, and I was just experimenting, like, what, what could this thing possibly do? But, but it started the bug in me that kept growing, right? So I kept watching it more, it became more of a hobby of mine, and I would keep a, an, an eye out on it. Um, then due to COVID, um, I was a marketing consultant, consulted for some of the biggest brands in the world, uh, Dove, Airbnb, Budweiser, Corona, um, and had a pretty... I had a very successful career in, in helping these brands. Um, and then I started doing like interim CMO jobs because I couldn't go to see clients. Um, yeah, welcome, and, welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, everyone getting locked down, right? Yeah, you can't go out there. It's it's uh, too, too uh, dangerous, right? So Yeah, exactly. So I needed a more active role in the company because I wouldn't be able to have these like mass meetings for two, three weeks to like kind of change the mindset of the marketing department. Um, and after my last position, I was like, I want to find something in, in crypto because I was, I noticed I was spending as much time at work as I was following up on what the crypto market was doing. Um, not knowing that once you start working in crypto, the last thing you do is follow up on what everyone's doing because you're just busy building your protocol. Um, but I love it because it's it changed my hobby into, into my work, right? Um, and been at it for over a year, um, doing fairly well, building a lot of things and I won't look back. I'm, 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 I'm happy where I'm at and I'm staying in crypto. That's awesome, man. And, and so, I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, crypto has been an interesting uh, journey for us. You know, it, it's, it's you know, I think 2017 was kind of like the changing point for most people who are in it. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that if you were following it prior to then, it was kind of like, it was kind of intriguing in terms of like, ah, you know, keep your eye on this kind of thing. And then 2017 comes, Bitcoin, you know, does the climb, does the drop. Uh, you know, it's kind of done the climb uh, last November, done the drop this year, so to speak. I think we've kind of gotten accustomed to that, um, and 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 the you know I think the the evolution of of I think the effect of COVID with the evolution of like hey you can work from anywhere in the world you know as long as you have internet access I think is is been uh, incredible, um, mm -hmm. and then I mean talking about let's talk about uh, you know the the mass adapt adoption part of it in terms of. You know what? How do you see it going from where it's gotten to? To, I mean, we're not even we're not even a small percentage of people like using crypto or or understanding what it is to a certain degree. I mean, what? Let's talk about uh, you know, 
how it's typically seen as being mass adopted per se and 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 mm -hmm. you know contrast that with maybe your perspective yeah i mean i have a very contrarian perspective i think to the whole mass adoption thing i i was in it in 2012 where no one talked about bitcoin and in 2017, where employees of mine were starting to talk about crypto. Right. And then this, this last bull run, where like my mom's asking me about it. Right. So you see this growth, but that growth is going into speculators, right? People that simply want to invest in crypto, but they're not using crypto, right? They're not using it um, to stake or to, to do options vaults or you know, provide liquidity for protocols, they don't understand that part. They're just simply speculating on something, nor do I think they'll have the time to invest to learn how to do it, right? The the UI, it, it is easier than ever to buy Bitcoin, for example, um, than it was back, back in the day. Back in the day, you had to, I think it took me four hours to figure out how to buy Bitcoin the first time I ever bought it, yeah. back in 2012. Yeah, yeah it was it's pretty crazy. Um, <clears throat> now it's, it's easy, but then the rest of it's not easy. And I think the, the crypto community as a whole thinks more, more and more people will simply learn about it. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think they will. Right. I don't think they will because it takes a huge uh, amount of time. It took me probably like two months, eight hours a day of how to like, even figure out like what is liquidity providing? Why should I do it? What are the risks? What's in permanent loss? Like it's a it's a lot that you need to learn to where should I go? What do certain things mean? Why would I want ST Soul, for example, instead of normal soul? Okay, it's it's a it's a stake token, but what does that mean? Like it's it's like a you know, every time you look somewhere, there's just more deeper information that then you need to research and it's it's not easy. So the way I kind of look at it and our company as a whole is kind of like the whole airline industry, right? So the Wright brothers created the plane, then there was plane builders. And, you know, the big consensus at that time was everyone will fly a plane, right? The reality right. is, is that's not what, yeah, that's not what happens. So you have a pilot gets trained to, to fly like an Airbus and one gets uh, trained to fly in the Boeing. Someone who got trained to fly a boat and can't fly in the airbus, right? So these pilots have a huge amount of education. Sometimes it can go across to other manufacturers. Sometimes it can't, just like blockchains. Sometimes right. it can go to one blockchain. Sometimes it can't. It would take a new education to work with a different uh, blockchain, for example. Um, but most of us enjoy planes just by being uh, passengers, right? Right. We don't go... And, and that's how I think that it'll work in the with crypto as well. People will get into crypto and use all the features of crypto when they're simply active passengers. They're not trying to figure out how to do everything. You know, and one of the projects yeah. that we're building actually does that. It's a wallet. You don't have the key for you don't have the seed phrases. You don't need to save them. Um, you know, if you want to, you're all you're automatically lending and borrowing with the money that you have in the wallet. Uh, so you don't even have to worry about where to find out where to put it and everything else. Like it just makes everything so easy that it just feels like Web 2.0 instead of Web 3.0. Right. Right. And I think that's where we get the mass adoption. We're not going to have a bunch of people coming in and actively looking at different protocols. Um, and trying to figure out how to use them and actually know what their wallet T phrases are and have a piece of paper that they saved in a vault somewhere. Because that's actually one of the biggest, as simple as it sounds, it's actually the biggest stress point from all the research that we've done for people getting into crypto, um, into DeFi, let's say. Because yeah, it's so really worried scary, about right? losing their seed phrases. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, it's all scary. Like, cause, cause you're like, cause I mean, like, you know, I, even when I was getting orange with my my business partner, right? He's like, he's showing me. I'm like, man, this is really complicated, man. And I'm not like a, I'm not like a tech a tech blockhead. I know how to like use technology. But to your point, uh, I just I don't really care how it all works. I just want to make sure that it works and that it's easy to use. Like that's really all I care about. Like so so having this like 
treasurer where I'm having to like, you know, do this and, you know, seed phase if phrases. And he's like, I'm not taking pictures. Like, no, don't take a picture. He's like, cause you, if you do that then you could, could get hacked and I'm like, man, this, this is like, this is like apprehensive, man. It's just, it's just like, I don't know if I want to do this, you know? And then you're like, oh, well, if I don't do it, then I'm, I'm losing out on like potential money I could make, which I understand that part, you know? Yeah. So to me, it's a trade off at that point, which is more important, making more money or like dealing with the headache of making more money, you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the good, the good and bad part is there's so many times I'm in a conversation and most people who consider me a crypto expert or a DeFi expert, I, I think I am. But you know how many times I'm in a conversation, I feel like the dumbest person in the room because I just don't get what it is. And because it's simply a new area of DeFi that I'm not as familiar with and how it works and everything else. The good thing is, is the community knows that and they everyone, I mean, anyone is always always willing to help you figure out and explain right. it to you. That's the really good part. Yeah. Because they know a lot of people, they know it's not easy, but it's hard. And like, you can't know everything. I don't know if anyone knows everything about everything in DeFi. You, you see what I mean? Because it's, yeah, it's really no, I, that's unrealistic to have that expectation. There's no way. I mean, you know, it's one thing, you know, they say that the, the best method of, of, of knowledge, I think, is like you pick, you kind of mm -hmm. figure out what you're good at and you start to focus on that and you expand on that. And then you figure out how to you how to make that useful for everyone else. And that that brings you a certain purpose and meaning in your life because you feel good about you being good at something or great at something yeah. that can be yeah. useful to other people. And then people appreciate yeah. you for that. Right. It's I mean, very true. One of, one of the other examples I like to use that's even easier to drive home the idea is if you were to knock on 100 homeowners' doors and ask them if they have an interest rate swap, they'll probably tell you no. They probably won't even know what it is, right? But if they have a fixed mortgage, there's an interest rate swap that which happens to make sure that you have a fixed mortgage, right? So they, yeah. don't, see all the, they don't see all the plumbing behind financial instruments. Right. And that's what I think. De I think that's what DeFi is. It's like right now we're we're working on the plumbing to replace the old financial system for a better right. financial system. But people aren't going to see this stuff. They shouldn't in the future. At least not most people. No, I mean, what's what's interesting about? I mean, to to me, I mean, bringing up the 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 financial industry in that regard. I mean, I what 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 always rings true, or what, what in my mind, what comes up is like reflecting back on i mean the last 15 years right going back to 2007 2008 you know when the great financial crisis occurred and you know you had this financial system that everyone just thought oh it's it's humming it's going fine right and all of a sudden people realize oh wait it's not and oh wait wait a second it's breaking oh wait if we don't do this and like let these people off the hook you know essentially you know i'll, I'll call them crooks you know then then mm -hmm. everything's going to break and, and my elementary, you know, my, my, I, I don't know if it's elementary, but my, my like visceral response that I was like, dude, let it break, man. These guys should be ashamed of themselves for let for knowing what they were doing, letting mm -hmm. it happen. And then being like, oh, sorry guys. Yeah. I slapped us on the hand. Well, you know, we, we can't let it break because that'll, you know, that, that'll be too, but too cat catastrophic, but yeah, sorry about all the catastrophe that's affecting all the little people. You know, it, it's and, yeah. and and to me, like in a certain way, the way I the way the reason I gravitated towards Bitcoin and crypto and that kind of thing, it's a response to that. It's a response to to the centralized mechanisms and people in charge who who don't have any shame in what they like. There's no accountability and that. Yeah. And like and so so to me, the like the, the word DeFi means represents like um accountability for that like just mm -hmm. oh like we're not like like i don't want to be a part of that happening again you know there's there's something about that 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 just speaks to me in this regard which is why i'm, I'm i grab i've gravitated towards crypto and that's why i like it so i yeah. i feel like there's a a value to it that's beyond just the finance the, the literal financial part of it you know it's the yeah. philosophical part that mean that makes the difference I, I always look at examples and analogies a lot so like in Portugal, I don't know when it was, but I think it was in the early 2000s, had a big drug issue and AIDS. No, it actually wasn't in 2000s, it was in, in the 90s. So they legalized all drugs and made it a uh, medical, they didn't legalize it. They made it, they didn't make it a legal issue, they made it a health issue, right? Okay. So if you get caught with anything or doing anything, you have to go to the doctor, you need to get treatment. If you're a dealer, that's still illegal, right? 
that reduced the age rate, reduced the drug usage, and a lot of people used it as like a, as a hey, this actually helps. Same things happened in the U.S. with all these people legalizing all these countries, not countries, sorry, states legalizing marijuana. Right. The use has actually gone down, not up. Um, so the same thing in the banking industry, I look at Switzerland. Switzerland for the past 10 years, or actually a little longer than 10 years, they changed their, the way their central bank works. Uh-huh. And the central bank actually invests in the stock market. And the, the, um, their inflation is zero and has been basically zero for over a decade. Wow. Right. And the people's salaries, because of that inflation, is now more than double, in a lot of cases, more than double of what the average salary is in the US. So the quality of life increased drastically, salaries increased drastically. Yeah. Meanwhile, cost of living remains the same, right? Yeah. Exactly. So they did something different. So there's an example in the world of someone who fixed it. Um, I don't know if that example would be able to be used by the U.S., but then there's also the example of what Bitcoin's doing, right, which is more of a global solution instead of just a country solution. So I look at those things. I'm like, hey, this is where we're headed, right? So either people start doing, and I think the whole, I don't know if you've seen the thing about BRICS, the Brazilian, Indian, Chinese, South, Russia, South American, yeah. yes, building like a, a global currency, reserve currency, but they're going to use natural resources to back that currency. That's not Makes very sense. different than what, yeah, it's not very different than pre gold standard, right? And it's not different. Right, right. I mean, yeah. that, and that's really what, I mean, that to me, that's what really what Bitcoin is, is to me, that's what spoke to me, you know, is like, you know, the, the, the kind of the issue that I saw, I mean, I guess the good and the bad about about Bitcoin is like is that it's there's only 21 million, right? So people mm-hmm. people like got into it. It's, hey, I don't want to miss out, right? And then and then it, it, you kind of wait and see. I mean, the last one will be mined after we're all long and dead. I mean, you know, it, it's yeah. but 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 98 percent of mm-hmm. of Bitcoin will be mined by 2030. I mean, that's less than 10 years from now. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and so you know how. You know how sometimes people say things and it just irks you? The yeah. one thing that irks me is when people are like, yeah, but Bitcoin's not backed by anything. It irks me because if I said, how much is Visa's network worth? Like the computer systems, distribution, the credit card machines, how much is that worth? Right? And but oh, billions. Right? I'm like, well, you have the biggest like computer network that's been the most secure ever in history. What's that worth? Right. right. That has to be worth more than the Visa and MasterCard and Amex all put together. So, yeah, it's invaluable. I mean, yeah, it's it, it's a good that's a really good point, because this, that what, what's what been missing it. And that, you know, go back to your point about adoption is like what's missing is like the faith. Like people just don't have they, it's not been long enough for the faith to be really entrenched. Like there's so many yeah. things that just become entrenched because it, it just it becomes a custom. Like it just becomes you, you get used to it. Right. You know, now it's interesting the, you know, since COVID, right? You have thing about like this is why crypto is, is super relevant because we're trending towards a cashless society, right? Yeah. There are places, yeah. there are places that I go to and like they're like, this is a cashless establishment. And I'm like, wait a second, you're telling me that you won't accept the like dollars, like paper, like paper money that that that's what you that's being transferred electronically between my bank account and your bank account. You're telling me that you won't take the dollar, the physical dollar? Like really, yeah. and and that's yeah. and that's the part that I'm like, wow, we're we're heading towards like a, a digital, like a true digital world, and and the the issue that I think, not to be a conspiracy theorist, is like, is, is going to be like once like the government and the, and the government's already getting hip to it. They've already been hip to it. They're already, but once they get involved in the center, central like digital currencies, that's when like man, there's going to be, I mean, I, I don't know, I just don't know what to expect, man. And what what, what do yeah. you think about that? It's, it's, um, I think, I think the sign is flashing red for, for, for the way things have been, right? And I'm sure you see it, um, at your company as well. The quality of people leaving Goldman Sachs, Meta, Google, and going into Web3. And when we ask them, like, why, why would you ever want to leave Goldman Sachs? And they're like, because this is not the future. This is the past. It's just a yeah. dying. It's just a dying animal. Right. And the amount of, of the amount of people leaving those jobs and working in going to crypto or Web three 
is insane to me. Like the lead developers of Meta left and they created a new chain called Sui, right? Yeah. Um, and, and recently I was at a conference two days ago at the NIR conference and one of the heads of the big uh, VC funds, she was saying in a, in a bull market, the, the number of developers is a lagging indicator, but in a bear market, it's a leading indicator. So right now we're in a bear market, but right. the amount of developers keeps growing. And because that keeps growing, these are the creators. These are the people who create the future, right? Our, our developers. Right. Um, they keep growing. If they keep growing, then this is going to be the future because there won't be the other one, right? And right. Those, those numbers are like anyone who says, oh, but crypto can be banned by government and it will stop it. Not if it's up to developers and developers are, keep growing. So, you know, there's not going to be an alternative. I don't think it's a question anymore of whether this thing is going to grow or not. It's it's the numbers are there. All the the leading indicator of how many developers are coming. That's it's there. Yeah, you know? no, and and I mean, since you're segueing into hiring and 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 that kind of thing, you know, it, it's. I mean, what we're seeing is like you know, it, you know, the in recruiting, you know, you if you if you you're in a space that that's apples to apples, you know, let's just say uh, as a, as an example of a construction project manager, project manager, superintendent, superintendent, the typical response is unless you understand their pain point, the typical response is like why would I go to another construction company? It's the same thing I'm doing over here. It's just a different shirt name of the shirt, you know. But when you have that conversation with a developer and a, at a Web2 company, that a Facebook or a Google, where like they, they, they've seen the innovation occur and they're like, wait a second, this is the next ish, iteration of innovation. Like, they, it's like, no, no, sign me up. Where do I go? What do you got? Like, that, that's, that's a different uh, type of, of, of inspiration for them to say, yeah, thanks for calling me, man. I want to talk to you. And, and, you know, it doesn't eliminate the the issue or problem of finding good ones. Not everyone who raises their hand is good, right, or viable. Yeah. So that's you know that, yeah. that's where that's where we can come in and help out with that. You know, but talk to me. I mean, in, in terms of Aldrin hiring and and you know, I, I always like to kind of understand you know the philosophy behind behind hiring and how you guys see it because I, there's this idea of of enrolling, you know, and I and I and mm -hmm. I say from like. When, hiring is is you know the, the term hiring is is really just it's basic in terms of like hey I, i'll pay you to do this job because this business needs that from uh whatever reason growth we lost someone but we need someone to do this job we'll pay you this much that's hiring someone okay yeah enrolling is different because what you're doing is you're saying hey join us on the mission and help us with the mission and your part in the mission will be as follows. And in return for you exchanging your time, we will do this for you. Does that sound right to you? And, and then that yeah. speaks to people, right? That's what speaks. And so talk to me about how you guys go about enrolling in, in a narrative volume. Like, what is it that, that you guys do that, that's been successful for you and challenging for you at the same time? Yeah, I mean, we've we've made that shift. Let's say in the beginning, it was very much like we need this, we need a, a Rust developer, go find one, right? Um, but we've made that shift because we've been able to, we've been able to show the the quality work that we do to be able to attract better talent, let's say, or top talent. Um, and a lot of that talent has come on, and they look at our site and they'll say, "Hey, I really love like because we, our site says." Cut the 50 years of work, cut the, cut the 50 years of work you need to do in half, right? And that's actually our mission because we figured out mathematically based on the APRs that you get from, um, from some of these protocols, if you're getting 15% and you put 200 bucks a, uh, a month into it, in 25 years, you'll have a 60, $70,000 salary, right? So yeah. you won't need to yeah. work. You won't need to work for money. The money is working for you. It's very much like Rob Kawasaki with the Rich Dad Poor Dad. You can use crypto to do that in a much easier way than you can with real estate. So people who believe in that mission and 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 they're like, wow, this is something like honorable to do. We're able to attract talent because of that, right? So to us, it's super important that they believe in the mission. But on the other hand, our mission is also helping us attract the right people. Right. Because we're not a Google, right? We're not a, 
a huge company that everyone wants to come to. We're not a smaller yet. company. Yeah, not, not yet. yet. But our mission will help us set, it has helped us set us apart. And it's it's also helping us set us apart for people we're trying to recruit because it's super competitive. And and we realize that, which yeah. we weren't aware of. But you know, these developers have, you know, five, ten offers. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it comes down to, I mean, and, that, and that's, that, that becomes a challenge, you know, and, and some of the things that we do as, as recruiters, you know, my firm, Blockchain Recruiters, what, in working with us, you know, with our clients, it, it's, we end up being, we can be, end up being the, the differentiating, uh, compelling factor, right? Mm -hmm. And that, and that becomes, because really, really what it comes down to when, when, when you enroll, it, it's, it comes down to not only does the person believe in the mission, but really does the person believe that, you know, it's it's understanding the pain point. Like the question always becomes like, hey, other than the fact that I called you, why are we talking? Tell me why we're talking. And we start that conversation and then they start they start divulging, well, I don't really like this, but, uh, you know, I want to do this, so that kind of thing. And then you start kind of really peeling that back. And then based yeah. on on our clients in terms of what they're seeking, right, that's where the 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 really the gray matter of matchmaking occurs um, behind the yeah. scenes. You know, it, it's it's not just I mean hard skills that you can match up and say, all right, you're good, let's go. You know, like that kind of thing. So um, I appreciate yeah, that. Well. I'm very keen of you guys to 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 look at it that way because it's it's going to be it's not all about money. Like you know, five offers isn't really it doesn't really come down to. I always say to the candidates, it's like, look, let's just say everything being equal. Right. Let's say they pay you all the same. What's going to be the differentiating factor for you? And they're like, oh, wow, I hadn't thought about that because they're like, I was just expecting different numbers and I would pick the highest one. I'm like, OK, well, that's one way of looking at it. But then the question becomes, all right, here's what I suggest. Why don't you list out what you really want? You know, all the things yeah. that you want in the perfect company for you, like the perfect team. All right. And then go back and look at what all those companies can offer you. Compare that back to what you want. And what and what what that is, then that might be the you might see hey a very objective way of of delineating you know getting rid of the emotion part, emotional part because you know there's gonna be a connection with people but then there's gonna be like a matter of like hey does this satisfy what I want kind of thing and yeah. and let's be let's be frank people do what's in their best self interest most of the time as much as we we gravitate towards selflessness people do what people do what is gonna preserve them preserve their family right. Yeah, and that comes exactly. down to, you know. Yeah, and that's because since we're su in such an innovative area, a lot of companies will fail, right? Right. And, and that's, yeah. that's always why they're scared. But, but that's why your guys' role is very important because we're not always going to be able to create the trust needed to attract the talent we want. But you guys, if they're working with you, have that trust. You've already vetted a company you're working with Right. And you're giving that stamp of approval, which is invaluable at times, you know. Um, so it's important the role that you guys play also because, you know, it, it's hard to navigate um, all the offers they get. And I know they're getting a ton of like certain positions are getting yeah. offers every day. It I, becomes I'm overwhelming. Like, I can't yeah. Candace will say I'm like, OK, if they, they go through the process of one or two companies in the hiring and they, they get an offer, they don't get an offer. And then, and then you, you know, as a recruiter, you say, "Hey, I got something else." Like, you know what? I'm kind of tired, man. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, like, I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna stay where I am right now. I'm just gonna, like, because they, they can become overwhelmed. You know, they're, yeah. they're like, ah, you know, I, I it, like the pain of them leaving and trying to figure out, like, oh, should I, you know, why? And it, it sometimes, sometimes the evolution of of going out on the market as a candidate tells you, like, maybe I, I have a good here. I don't, maybe I don't have to leave. You know, maybe yeah. maybe I thought I did, but I don't have to, you know, and that and that, that can be help, that, you know, I always tell my clients and candidates like, look, I'm not I'm not forcing you to do something that you don't want to do. Like I want it. I want it to be the best for you, you know, but mm -hmm. if, if not hiring this candidate is not good for you, if you don't feel right, don't do it. If you don't if you, if yeah. this is going to make your situation, your family better, don't do it. Like, you know, that's that's a very yeah. um, it's very core to what to what we really promote um, with, with our candidates and clients. That, so. that happened. That happened to me actually. Like I, during the bull market, I would get probably minimum two to three offers a week, right? Wow. And I'm a CMO, so yeah. I'm not even like super high value. I just I am probably the the first like very like Fortune 50 company marketeer guy to join crypto, 
but I'm not like super high value in comparison to like when you need definitely you need developers back then or react native or a different whatever, skill maybe. set. I mean, you, you're, yeah. you're as needed as they are. It's just in different ways, you know, I mean, it's yeah. just, so, yeah. So I took some of those calls and some of them were offering me like double what, what, uh, what I'm making here, but it's not, it's also about looking at the company, what they're building and trying to figure out like, is this going to be around? Um, right. Is, there, is everyone driven to fix what they're trying to fix? Uh, because a lot of the companies, they disappear. So I didn't take any of the offers, although some of them were very big um, moments for a very big company that I know wasn't going anywhere, but I didn't feel like they were building anything either. Right. You know, what I mean? so it wasn't motivating. Yeah. I mean, again, ultimately, it's, you know, the, 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 you know, what are you, what are you devoting your time to? And what's, what's, you know, seeing the long-term picture is very, very essential in terms of that, because mm -hmm. really what it comes down to in, in, in satisfaction of, of career and vocation is really, you know, it's, it's autonomy, it's mastery. And then the last one, more importantly, is the meaning that you derive from it. Right. And, yeah. and, and that, that handling of, of risk versus like, Hey, this is stability again, goes back to preservation. Like, you, you know, you, you want, everyone wants stability. Like there's a little bit of, you know, everyone has an appetite for risk or like adventure to a certain degree, but then at some point, you know, the mind, the body, they say, Hey, stability is what we yearn for in that regard. Yeah. And that's what, yeah. that, that's what people pick in, in a mate in the company. I actually have a, I have a question for you. <laughs> What what changes have you noticed in hiring and from both sides, from companies and from candidates, from bull market versus bear market? Well, I mean, it's it's um it's a very good question. I mean, I would say that I think that there have been uh, it's been a kind of a, a melting pot of of responses or data indicating you know a few things one i think the companies that were trying to like you, you in in a, in a bull market typically you have companies that will say hey we'll pay what we're gonna pay we'll pay we'll pay we'll pay 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 right there are companies that like uh that will kind of do that willingly there are companies that will kind of do that unwillingly because they're like ah they sometimes they understand the nature of like hey there's going to be a time when this is going to come down and so they kind of like they kind of they kind of hang steady and they're like, all right. And then sometimes and then those companies are they kind of wait and then and then they want to see, all right, let's see how the market changes. And they have a certain patience. So there's this um, there's a certain patience that occurs in in the bull to, to bear. Right. And they 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 you know, there's apprehension that comes in. Hey, it's going down. Right. So they're looking at overhead. They're looking at how we can squeeze whatever we have in productivity. At the same time, there's a growth that that has to occur, so they so they try to balance that. So it's mm -hmm. um, and on the candidate side, it's it takes a while for them to realize um, that what they get apprehensive about leaving, not knowing if they're going to leave for an opportunity that might be better short term, but if it's still be around long term. So they start yeah. getting apprehensive about like again, it goes back to stability. Should I leave something right now that I know is steady that's going to go and continue along a certain path for something that if I go over there, I'm the new person and and psychologically I could be the first person out. Right. And that so that kind of it, it's a, it's a navigation of, of those type of, of psychological sentiments that occurs in, in understanding that. And really, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up with this, Joa, is is that people people do what they need to do to satiate pain and they do that at the time when the pain is the greatest okay yeah. and and that and that that requires counterintuitive action like they need to do something that they they either decide they're going to do something or they just endure the pain right and yeah. that that's really the the core of of like of you know psychologically like that's the difference between posting on on uh, for a job post and getting applicants those applicants are coming because primarily out of pain but that pain can't mm -hmm. necessarily be satiated with 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 your pain can't be satiated with their applications right they're not always the people that you guys want or need in that regard so yeah. there's that there's that disconnect i think in in that in that regard in terms of that process that's been you know accepted since monster.com came out or you know whatever you know the internet came out in 91 kind of thing right um mm -hmm. so yeah i hope i hope that's 
hope that answers your question in that regard. It's really good. Yeah, question. 100 percent. It's like if I sum it up, the patience of companies is very different in bull markets and bear, and bull markets and bear markets, which is very true. When you said, as soon as you said it, I'm like, bells went off in my head. It's a really good analysis of it because that's very true. So, well, thank yeah. you, man. So. So Joe, I I I appreciate your time, man. I, I it's been it's been a super interesting conversation. Appreciate your journey. Um, you know where where can uh, where can people hit you up with Aldrin? You know what what is it um, that you want them to know about you guys and and how to connect with you guys uh, the best way? Yeah, I mean Aldrin.com is our website. We Aldrin.com is not the only thing we're building. As I said, we have a, a wallet. Uh, that we're super excited about. Um, we are basically merging DeFi and banking with an app. So we're, we're calling it Web 2.5 uh, awesome. or banking or banking 3.0, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, if the website's not up yet, but it'll be up shortly for for the wallet. But there's a lot of cool things we're building. So you know, um, we're constantly hiring. A lot of people are actually surprised that we're hiring as aggressively as we are because in the bear market, a lot of companies don't. But, you know, we did well in the bull market and we're just keep on pushing through because there's a lot to be built. And we have because we have this mission, there's so many things to build and so many different tools to be able to build it that we're, we're excited. So awesome. either go for me, it's Joe Santos on LinkedIn for the company. Go to Aldrin.com. Check us out. Um, let's see what we're up to. Awesome. So that, that's aldrin.com. That's A L D is in Delta R Romeo I India in mm -hmm. November.com. And Joa is spelled J O A H Santos S A N T O S. And you can find him on LinkedIn. He's the chief marketing officer of Aldrin. And they are building a lot of different things, a lot of cool things, uh, banking. 3.0. I'm excited for that, Joa. Thank you so much. Uh, eternally grateful here. Uh, Dave Hampton, Robo Recruiter, Joa Santos. Thank you. Look forward to the next time we speak. Thanks, David. Great talk. See you. All right.